Okay, Bruce Taylor, your frugal tech. If you're going to find server hardware out there for under a thousand bucks, would you really spend five hundred dollars or more just for the operating system? You know, probably give that a second, third, fourth thought before you did it. Um, you know, then that's that's the situation out there that uh, Microsoft's finding itself in. So. The not so exciting announcement of Windows Server 2008 uh, Foundation. That's the uh, it's a new baby from Microsoft. So I thought I'd talk to you and tell you what it is and what it can do and what it doesn't do. Well, first off, uh, this is a low cost server product. You know, Balmer basically made the comment that it would be like the netbook operating system for servers. Okay, that's that's kind of what he said. This thing will cost somewhere between 150 bucks to 200 bucks, um, and so you know Windows Server is like 500 dollars, and it kind of goes up from there. It is first a great first server for a small business. Okay, if you're running a peer-to-peer -peer network, this thing could save you a lot of money. Uh, it is 64-bit only, so it's got to run on 64-bit hardware. Uh, it can function as a domain controller. It's got to act. You can you can have the Active Directory and you can configure your users. Now there is a 15 user limit, and that's important to know because unlike the other Windows Server uh, licenses out there, there's no client access licenses to deal with. There's no CALs. It's a hard coded 15 user limit, and boom, you're done. Even if you join it as a member server to an existing domain. You've got more than 15 users in that Active Directory. Uh, Windows Server 2008 Foundation is going to have a problem with that. But what's important is what you can do with this thing. It, you know, it has terminal services. You can run it as a web server. You can do file, print sharing, resource sharing, set up as a domain controller. Uh, you don't, like I said, you don't have to mess with cows on this thing. Any application is certified to run on Windows Server 2008 is going to run quite happily on this product. Um, you, you cannot go out and buy it retail, I'll tell you that now, it's only available through OEM so you get it through companies like you know Dell and HP and that sort of thing. Uh, it only supports a single socket motherboard. Now multiple cores are fine but only one physical processor, that's it. Uh, and it doesn't include the Hyper-V uh, virtualization technology. As a matter of fact, Looking at the licensing on this, I'm of the opinion you really can't run any kind of virtualization software on this server. That's something to kind of keep in mind. So who is this thing really designed for? Well, Microsoft is trying to kind of address two different markets. One, the emerging markets, and that's, you know, people that's basically using uh, pirated operating systems or they're looking for low-cost alternatives like Linux. And then the second market would be small businesses under 15 user networks. More than likely their very first server and uh, the people who don't need the heavy duty applications that come with small business server like Exchange Server or SQL or SQL, that kind of thing. But I think there's actually a third market. I think this thing, because it's relatively cheap, you know, like a client, a Windows client OS, I think you're going to find a lot of people throwing that on laptops and other, you know, their their desktops and using Windows Server as their primary OS. Why the heck not? Most everything can run on it anyway. So uh, I think you, you know, and I think you've got people that are tech enthusiasts, you know, uh, IT professionals that want to run tests and all that. Now they got an inexpensive uh, operating system from Microsoft to uh, to uh, practice their skills on or develop their products on. So uh, that's kind of the market. For this now, I know I've got a lot of folks that watch that would say, "Well, eh, why not Linux?" Well, Linux has its place certainly in certain functions, certain roles, but there's just an awful lot of business applications that require Windows. And when 90, 95 percent of the business world runs Windows, you know, we need to talk about uh, some of the stuff that Microsoft's doing right. And I think this is a good idea. So this is a step above Windows Home Server. You know, I did a video about that using it in small business, uh, but you can't set up a domain with that product. Well, here you can actually use it as a domain controller. Um, so that's my take on Windows Server 2008 Foundation. I think it's a pretty good value. 
It's certainly going to help, I think, a lot of small businesses when they're looking at server hardware going, why would I spend, you know, $900 to buy a, a physical server and then I got to turn around and spend that much on the operating system. That's going to kind of quash a lot of that, maybe make, help some folks make that transition to a, 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 an actual Windows server and a domain. Well, listen, I'm Bruce Naylor, your Frugal Tech, and um, we're now, uh, uh, we, we've moved our, our blog to uh, frugalbrothers.com. Make sure you uh, join us over there, www.frugal, that's F-R-U-J-L, G-A-L, brothers.com. I can't, I'm telling you, I'm just having one of those days today. <laughs> frugalbrothers.com. And uh, remember, if it's in your shop, not making you money or saving you money, get it out of there. And uh, make sure you always rate our, our videos, leave comments, we'd love to hear from you. I'm Bruce Nader, Frugal Tech, we'll talk to you later.